Hi friends, welcome to another video and today's topic will be how to control your dog's prey drive in the advanced level. In the previous video, which I will link you in the info box, I showed you already the first steps how to teach your dog to control his prey drive. This is a very important topic because when you have high drive, for example, high drive working dogs, they have a lot of prey drive from the genetics and it's really important that you teach a dog from a young age how they control their prey drive, how they control their impulse to have it easier later when you want to do bite work with your dog. Because a lot of dogs struggle when the helper is around or the decoy to control themselves and to be obedient to the handler because they just focus on the prey. So today I'm going to show you the next steps, the advanced level, how to control it and how to learn your dog to control himself. And for this purpose, I don't need the ball anymore. I have some jute sleeves, leg sleeves, which I will use in monitoring. And I also have a sleeve for the arm. And yeah, I'm going to take my dog and I'm going to show you how I will teach the advanced level in prey drive control. So in preparation for my next exercise, I have my two leg sleeves here and I will place one on this side and one on the other side. So I can stand in between, I can have my dog look at the prey, look at me and then I'm gonna release him to the prey. So this is the next step. Why? Because for most of the dogs, the ball is important, but after that, there comes the biting gear, the bite work gear, for example, a sleeve, a leg sleeve, whatever. So in most dogs, this is the next level, which means the prey drive for this equipment is even higher. So this is the next step. And I'm gonna show it to you with my dog. And after that, I will use another method that will be even higher prey drive. That means I'm going to be the helper for the dog. Why am I the helper? Because the prey drive with me is higher than on the dead gear. Let's call it the dead gear. But it's not too high with an, another helper. All right, here I have my Exeter puppy. He's now around 11 months and he has just a flat collar, a pull collar on his neck and I have a leash. I have my two leg sleeves, which he really likes. And now I'm going to show you how I teach the control of the prey drive. Because you see now he wants to get it, but this is exactly what we will work on. So the first step, I have my leash on and I'm going to wait till the dog calms a little bit down. And when he's really calm, the first step is I'm going to send him to the leg sleeve. Come here. So as you see, he's really a prey drive dog. So what he wants so bad is the leg sleeve. And that's exactly why I have to train that a lot. Eva? And I'm just gonna stay calm. I don't pull on the dog's collar, nothing. I'm just gonna have to stay calm because my state of mind will transfer also to the dog and makes the dog nervous when I'm nervous. I'm gonna use a little bit of tactile commands. And now we do the same thing again. I'm gonna get a little bit distance. Eva, Eva, let the dog sit down. I'm just gonna wait till the dog calms down and when he looks at me, puck, I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna release the dog to the prey and now he can enjoy it a little bit. Kip. Yeah. And as to see, the longer he has the prey, the higher his drive and his motivation gets. And then I have to wait till the dog calms down again 
to just start over. And now just for training purposes, I'm gonna switch the sides and I can help the dog also a little bit with food luring to get the dog's attention a little bit and then the dog comes with me. I'm just gonna stay calm and just switch to the other side. Now he lost his food. And now I do the same thing again. Let the dog sit down and let the dog see the prey. Just gonna wait till he comes down. When he looks at me, attack. I'm gonna release him to the prey. So this will basically the next step, how to control your dog's prey drive. And if that works out pretty well, I mean, this is not perfect yet, but just to show you how the next steps would look like, I'm gonna just change the position and then we see you in a minute. So this will be basically the next step in the prey drive. For this purpose, you need a little bit more advanced obedience. I like to use the box because that's a, a target the dog knows and he knows that he has to stay in the box. So the next step, I will be in the role of the helper and I'm gonna take, this is an arm sleeve and you see now the dog really also wants to have the arm sleeve. But for this, he has to go back into the box and he has to wait, he has to calm down. And I can, if the dog's really calm, I can release the dog. Prey games. Kip. Now I'm gonna out the dog with another command because I'm not ready for the out yet. And we do that one more time. Eva. Box. So here also the dog knows he has to stay in the box. I can make a little bit more distraction to make it a little bit harder for the dog. I can tap on my sleeve. I can go towards the dog and move the prey. And when the dog stays calm, I'm gonna release him. Puck. And then he can enjoy the prey a little bit. I can do a little bit of bite work with him. Prey game again, Kip. because the problem is when you do that too much and when the dog is not allowed to express his frustration because this is exa eh, it's exactly a sign that the dog has a lot of frustration in it because he has to control himself. I need to give the dog the possibility to let out his frustration because otherwise it will get much higher and higher and higher. <coughs> and normally frustration leads to aggression and that's a thing we wanna avoid. <coughs> so what do we see now? The dog's frustration is very high. So that could also happen. And an easy way to fix is that you take some food and see if the dog will take the food because the food will reduce the level of stress and the level of prey drive. It will bring the dog a little bit down in his mind because we change the drive from prey to food. So that's a way you can handle too much frustration. The problem is a lot of dogs won't take food when they are in prey drive. And you have also have to take care or you also have to be aware that you don't reward the barking with the food. So only offer food or give food when the dog is calm again. So therefore he will notice, aha, uh -huh, when I'm calm, I also get some food if the dog will take it. <laughs> 